Okay, hopefully you can hear me. First thing we'll do is raise the blade, which happens to be a very convenient parking brake. Anytime you come to a stop, just set that sucker down. This thing's not gonna freewheel or roll at all. So get the blade off the ground, release the main clutch, hold it forward against the clutch brake, engage first gear. Now we'll roll forward, so we'll ease it in to engage. Lock it in. We'll just apply the right brake just to hold from turning. Let's back up. Pop it in reverse, do the same thing. Ease it in. Lock it in to move. Now let's uh do some turns. Back to first. Give it just a little throttle. Engage the main clutch. Now to turn right. Release the right clutch. We're drifting around slightly. Stab the brake to make more abrupt turns. We'll go left. Back up again. Steer the same way in reverse. Back to neutral. Re-engage the clutch. Engage the parking brake by dropping the blade. That's your basics of how to drive a D2. Now the Caterpillar D2 has five forward speeds and one reverse. And honestly, the fastest forward speed I've ever used in all practicality is third because fourth and fifth are awfully fast for most, most crawler applications. Um, and I've only ever used third for pulling a disc in the field. And anything faster than that, I really don't need to go because you really accelerate your undercarriage wear quite a bit. So we got some of these piles here. Let's try a little bit of dozing. Um, I'm gonna have to have the throttle just about wide open so I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear me over it. But uh, here's the plan. We have a few of these piles here. I'm gonna go into this one right ahead of me because it's about the right size for the D2 to bust through in one push. That'll make me an opening through my wall that I have set up here. So, problem with these D2s is they have such a short track base that every time you encounter a bump, they wanna ride up in an over center and they pitch like a rocking horse. That makes it incredibly hard to doze a flat grade. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'll come in, I'll have the blade low. These piles are basically on top of sod, so the ground has not been broken under them. I'll come in low, try and have the blade right at about the existing sod level and just start moving the clean material. What we'll do, we'll take this pile and we'll continue on down my push path here. And I have a little bit of a rise ahead of me. So since the blade is always out in front of the tracks, it's gonna encounter your change in elevation first. So what I'm gonna have to do to avoid digging the cutting edge in and potentially spinning out, stalling, losing traction, when I can feel that that just starts cutting a little harder on this rise, I'll lift the blade, I'll just creep it up a bit. My goal is to keep that cutting edge at ground level, not really dig at the ground, but not have it up so high that I'm funneling, spilling material uh, underneath it and behind it. So. I'll adjust for this little rise right here. And then when we get on the top, it starts dropping off. So basically, if I don't lower the blade again, it's gonna start leaving the ground and riding higher and higher. So I'll lower the blade. Again, just kind of monitoring the load that's on the engine, um, you know, how hard it's working, the sound of the tracks. If you run one of these machines long enough, you can basically where your posterior interfaces with the seat cushion is your main sensor, that and your ears. You're just always, listening to and feeling how the machine is working. So we'll hold a pretty flat grade till we get right here and it starts transitioning to flat. So again, the blade is gonna encounter that transition first. I'm gonna have to lift a little bit right here until the rest of the cat follows. And then I got to lower it again and we'll come out here to where I'm making the spoil pile. We get out in this area, I'll just raise the blade slightly about an inch at a time. And then this is where I want to funnel that material under the blade, under the tracks, and I'll come out here and I'll lift the blade and feather it just about the time I run out of material. It sounds fairly simple, but on a machine that's as short as a D2, you're always trying to balance that bubble. Um, they're really, really hard to grade with. So now let's come into this pile, see if we can push it out the other side. And 
I'm probably not going to be able to talk. I'll try, but in case you can't hear me, another characteristic of these D2s is when I get the, that blade with a bunch of material in front of it and it suddenly loads the drive line, the front end of that machine is going to want to pitch up and that's going to want to in turn raise the blade. So when I come in here, get under load and it starts pushing, my chassis is going to rear up. I'm going to have to turn the blade back down and try and maintain even cutting edge depth all the way through. So of course, once I get past the initial um, point of load, point of resistance, the chassis is going to want to come back down again. Then I'm feathering that blade back up. It's all about trying to keep that cutting edge nice and level so you have a nice and level push path. Those D2s, it's so easy to start building whoops like that and then every one makes the next one even worse and worse and pretty soon you can't even drive over the ground. So there's going to be a lot going on when I come in here. I'm going to try and explain it as I'm, as I'm doing it, but you may not hear.
well you could hear me that time. Honestly, I, until I have time to play it back on the computer, I don't know if any of my yelling's coming through anyway, but we'll recount what just happened on that last pass. Came into the second pile, and basically, you can see the difference from where I've stripped up to ground level. I had to have the blade pretty much at the existing sod level so I didn't cut too bad. Started pushing that pile, and as my machine comes up, you can see where this track rode up onto the sod and then came back down. That in combination with the load pitched the nose way, to, way up. So I had to uh, uh, put the blade down so that the blade didn't just raise and leave a big uh, clump of material here. Um, once I transitioned onto the flat, then it wants to dig the blade deeper. So I had to raise a little bit, maintaining or just kind of paying attention to the load on the machine and trying to maintain as level of a push surface as I can. This one actually turned out pretty good. The first one I did, you can see where I scooped in, it rose a little bit and then I dug in deeper here. It started to lug, so I lifted it a bit again. That's those whoops that's real easy to make with a Cat D2. So I got a little bit of cleanup to do on this one. This pass looks pretty good. Now, when I got down here and was trying to turn to the left, I had quite a load in front of the blade. So every time I'd release that left clutch, the right clutch would just spin because it didn't have enough traction only on that track to keep pushing the material that was in front of the blade and turn the cat around at the same time. So what I had to do was just lift the blade a little bit, take some of that tension off the ground, ease the load on the drive line so that when I release that left track, the right track could then move the material and the cat get me pointed in the right direction. Once I had it lined up with the road again, take that blade down that little inch that I had raised it so I'm not losing material and continue on. I hope this isn't getting too wordy for you, but you know, there, there's kind of a lot to do on these little short machines to push a consistent grade all the time. Um, kind of more goes on than what it really looks like. And like I say, you're always monitoring the performance of that machine trying to make sure you're not working it too hard, but that you're not giving anything away either at the same time. Okay, one last ride along the pass. Let's get lined up with the pile and ease into it. So that was just about the perfect push from the pile. I grabbed pretty much the full load. We pushed it all down through here. I didn't have so much in front of the blade that the right track would spin out. You can see it was doing a lot of scratching on this side to get me turned around. The left side track was just riding, no power to it at all, but I had just enough material in front. I was pushing a decent amount and it was enough that by just releasing that left clutch, this right track dug and dug and dug, but it pulled me all the way around, got me lined up with the road, and on our way we went.
Okay guys, that was how to operate a Caterpillar D2. Get all those dirt piles out of here. And I have a pretty good drainage shot, kind of an alley that goes down. And actually, if you follow the lay of the land, it's not going to follow the road. It's going to dive off and go right over there, which is fine. Nice little drainage ditch, takes it all down to the low spot. Cleaned up the edges a little bit, kind of back dragged, got rid of my windrows that built up to each side. I'll just follow on down here. You can tell by these little roots and sticks that are starting to stick up. I basically took it down to the existing ground level, so I really didn't build the road surface at all. Had to dispose of a little bit off to the edges. Get back in here. I think I, uh, looking at where the base of those trees are over to here, I probably built this up a good three feet, and as you get out here, probably about four feet where I'm standing. Just kind of created another little knob, and from all those uh, uh, popple roots and everything I dozed in here, it's going to be thick and popples in a few years, but that's okay. I don't mind it if they're down in here. At least they're out of my way, and they can do what they're going to do with that after that. So anyway. That's how to operate Caterpillar D2. I hope I have enough uh, audio that we can string something together and make a video. Not sure how much of that yelling you caught over the sound of the engine when I was doing the work, but it is what it is at this point. I think I got enough footage to give you an idea anyway. And the old Aaron mistress, she did everything I asked of her again. I love that girl. Pretty good machine. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Hope to catch you back again.